Hello and welcome and in this episode we're going to talk about painting and weathering RLM 66 cockpits. So the first cockpit is going to be a pre-shade and then painting the base colour of the top. The second cockpit is going to be a post-shade, you're working with the base colour and a lighter colour and then the next cockpit is working with oils. So the cockpit itself goes together really, really well. There's not many parts uh, to go in there. That being said, you do need to do a little bit of sanding and just make sure that um, there's no flash or anything in there. But again, it goes together really, really well. So the seat is fixed to its frame, uh, which comprises of three parts, and just make sure that um, it fits onto the back rear cockpit wall uh, evenly. Bit of super glue on the back should help locate it a bit better and hold it in place. So not gluing the seat allows you to be able to paint behind it. So we'll replace the rudder pedals with PE parts. So instead of using the kit parts, I'm going to be using PE parts from a BF109 trumpeter kit in the same scale. So I'm using the tweezers here to bend the foot strap into some sort of natural position. just like this and this is what it looks like when it's installed so you don't have to be really consistent with pre-shading it's just a case of trying to get into the shadow areas of the cockpit particularly paying attention to the bottom So with that done you should have something looking like this so you can either do more or less depending on what you want so the next phase is to paint the base color rlm 66 in this case which is guns h16 and the trick is to come in from different angles and get into every nut and cranny And then again it should look something like that. So the post shading, in this case using the base coat on H311, as you can see I'm doing some weathered streaking effects and you can do that by starting off with the paint and air mixture first off the part and then spraying up and there I'm doing some mottling effects. As you go along you can be doing lighter and lighter coats but generally speaking you want to start off darker in the bottom of the cockpit tub and lighter as it further comes out of the cockpit tub. Now it's time to spray a lighter mixture of the RLM 66 on the top surfaces and then doing some streaking effects on the side. 
So what I like to do is to spray some lighter mixture of the RLM 66, doing some extra streaking and doing some extra mottling on the top of the cockpit tub. Now it's time to work on the detail painting of the cockpit and here I'm painting the seat back uh, Vallejo khaki and then doing a top coat of burnt umber and this is going to be really really thin just to give it an effect and then moving on to Windsor and Newton inks so you can either use nut brown or peat brown depending on what you want and putting it on liberally. And here what I'm doing is removing the excess with just plain tap water to make sure that uh, the inks have not gone off too long. What I used to do in the past is paint the back of the instrument bezel white but what I've found is you can just use white plastic card instead for ease. I must admit this is not my usual pace but I'm cutting out the clear acetate for the back of the instrument panel. Not doing a particularly nice job but you don't need it perfect. And you can just use normal quick set Tamiya glue to set it in place. So to paint the instrument bezels I start off by picking out the interior with black. And you don't need to particularly neat on this bit. So painting the instruments you need quite a steady hand but that being said you don't need to go right to the edge when you need to give it a wash that will give you the edge and should blend in quite nicely. Okay the next job is to paint the white on the instrument panel and in this case I'm using Vallejo white. As you can see I'm using the brush uh, at a, a lot flatter angle. This is a bit like dry brushing uh, but with a much thicker paint gives you a bit more control. Again using the same technique for the yellow as we use for the white and in this case I'm using golden yellow. The main reason why we painted white on first everywhere is because the yellow is quite opaque. And then finally we come in with the red and if you do mess up this stage there's no harm in going back to the white and starting all over again. So in the past what we've normally used is a micro crystal clear for the instrument bezel glass. So what I'm going to use instead is this uh, UV LED lamp and I'm going to use a gel polish non-wipe top coat which is normally used for nails. So as you can see here I'm using a cocktail stick to get a bead of gel top coat and it is quite thick so all you need to do is just put it into the recess where the glass should be and just keep putting it in until it self levels so when you've put the gel top coat into the recess and you pull away from the instrument panel the properties are a bit like chewing gum so when you do pull away there'll be a long string attached all you need to do is keep pulling away until it snaps and it's proper weird it doesn't matter which side it falls if it falls onto the instrument panel it kind of sucks it in like a weird snake and you should be fine then all you've got to do is just keep on going and do the rest of the instrument panel if it doesn't self level and it sinks 
all you need to do is just put more in there and it will self level and mix together there will be no air bubbles in there so you should be fine so when you put all the top coat in that's what it should look like before being cured so you can set it at whatever but I've set it at 60 seconds and then when cured it should be exactly the same as when you first put it in simple as okay on the next episode I am just going to ruin everything that I've just done and make it all mucky I'm going to play with some white powder yeah it's not what you think and I'm going to pull my hair out and try and stick some wire in it into a hole that I can't see. So thank you very much for watching.